Why are daily minerals blue? So daily minerals come from uh, unicorn farts, and this gives them the slightest... <laughs> Sorry, that's a blue. <laughs> I don't know. Why are they blue? It's the copper. It's the copper in there? Yeah. Okay, okay so we're here with Dr. Ken Berry. Uh, we're actually at Low Carb Denver in a abandoned room, and we're recording a... We're going to find out your thoughts about electrolytes, right? Let's talk about it. Okay, so a lot of people have questions about electrolytes, so we wanted you to answer the most frequently asked questions Great. about, well, daily minerals and other stuff like that. So here we go. Let's do it. Okay, question number one, what are the daily minerals? So the daily minerals are a composition that Chris Bayer and I put together of the most common minerals that people don't get enough of in, in the modern diet and also minerals that can cause the most problems if you're not getting enough of them. And then also minerals that if you happen to get a little too much of them, mm -hmm. it doesn't lead to a medical problem. You just urinate the excess away and keep the amount that you need. How much should I be taking of the daily minerals? Is it possible to take too much? Would that be bad? So there's an actual serving size okay. that's listed on the bottle, and that's gonna give you a good supply, a good daily supply of minerals. It's not gonna be too much. Now, some people may need a little more than that. Um, most people are gonna need that daily serving unless you're very, very uh, petite and don't weigh a lot, especially if we start to talk about children who have mm. smaller body sizes, then they won't need a full serving size and you can basically just do the, do the division uh, based on their weight and what, what you weigh as an adult and then do the math and figure out what their daily serving would be. The daily minerals are completely safe for, for children. Uh, do, we, do we set an arbitrary age? No. Yeah, <clears throat> you just go by weight and, and every human on the planet without exceptions, regardless of their weight or age, they need daily minerals. Okay. Okay, how do the daily minerals differ from other electrolyte supplements that are out there on the market, like Mio, even the Keto Chow Electrolyte Drops, yeah. Element, things like that? So most of the electrolyte products that you would buy contain sodium, chloride, magnesium, potassium. Okay. Those are the main four electrolytes. And the daily minerals actually have those in them in addition to several other minerals that are not contained in the vast majority of mm -hmm. electrolyte supplements. Okay, so why are the daily minerals blue? So it's actually because of the copper content, uh, copper being one of the minerals that you need a tiny amount of each day. And that gives the minerals a very seductive <laughs> aqua blue color, which I think most people find very attractive. Now, sometimes it's kind of a, a lighter green color. It just depends on how much copper was yeah. in that particular it, it looks like the ocean in a bottle. There you go. Yeah. It's blue because it's pretty. <laughs> And vice versa. <laughs> Daddy, why is the sky blue? So it matches your eyes, Dumpling. Aww. <laughs> Should I take the daily minerals along with other electrolyte supplements? I think that especially if you're, if you're doing a lot of uh, activity and you're sweating a lot, I think that's perfectly safe and fine and appropriate to take your daily minerals. And then if you need extra electrolytes because of sweat loss, then you can, you can supplement with those as well. Okay. Do I need all of these minerals? Every human on the planet, without exception, needs all of these minerals. Now, it is possible to get these minerals from your diet. Uh, and Chris and I accounted for that, and the, the ratios that we set in the daily mineral drops. So if you're getting plenty of copper or mm. molybdenum from your diet, then the little bit that you're getting from daily minerals, you'll just urinate away. It's not gonna cause any problems. But every human needs these minerals. Yeah, so why are these minerals included if you get them in a diet? Like what's missing? I said you can get them oh, from you your can. diet. Oh, right. okay. So the, the problem with our modern food uh, climate is that most of the soil that is farmed has been farmed inappropriately for decades, in some cases over a century, of using uh, chemical fertilizer, of pushing the soil too hard, of not giving the soil a chance to recover. And in many cases, the soil is now depleted of these minerals, or it's been so improperly farmed for so long that even though the minerals are still in the soil, 
they're locked up mm. and you can't get access to them. And so uh, what that means is if you're going to eat some broccoli and you look up on the USDA yeah. Food Data Central, Right. Where the uh, data and, was acquired back in the fifties <clears throat> or the thirties right. or something like that. So those numbers on the USDA website doesn't that doesn't apply to your broccoli. That applies to the t broccoli that was tested back in the nineteen fifties or sixties. Okay. Okay. So you don't really know what was in your broccoli. It literally depends on the soil that the broccoli was grown in. If that soil had a good source of iodine, then there will be iodine in the broccoli. If there was no iodine in the soil, then there will be none in the broccoli, even though the USDA website says that there is a little bit. And this applies for meat and eggs as well. Hmm. The, the, the soil that grew the grass that the cow grazed, that grass can only, by definition, have the minerals that are in the soil that is available to that grass. And for the, for the eggs from the duck or the chicken or the quail, if, those, if that fowl did not have access to bugs and worms and grass and seeds that had those minerals in them, then it will not be in the egg and it will not be in the meat of that animal. And so and I would love for there to come a day, you probably won't like this, no, okay. I would love for there to come a day where nobody needs to take daily minerals. I think that would actually be fantastic. That would be a win for yep. everybody, right? right? But until we have really implemented regenerative ranching and regenerative farming and agriculture back to the way we should be farming and ranching the land, many, many people are deficient or depleted in these minerals. And by replacing them, either with food, if you know that the minerals in there, or with daily minerals, because you know the minerals are in there, you're going to be able to realize a level of, of health optimization that otherwise might have been out of reach. Are daily minerals appropriate for a carnivore diet? Yeah, and so as I said previously, if the grass grew in soil that was depleted or it just didn't have the mineral or the mineral was locked up due to inappropriate agriculture in the past, that cow is not magic. Although ribeyes taste magical. Wait, cows don't synthesize elements? Cows do not, <laughs> they, they cannot perform either fission or fusion. Okay. That, well, in their, they have a rumen, which is almost magic, but it is they almost cannot magic. create minerals or elements or electrolytes. Okay. And so if it's not in the grass that they ate, then it cannot, by definition, be in the cow that you're about to eat. Are keto chow daily minerals appropriate for a proper human diet? Yeah, and so if you're eating a proper human diet, which I highly encourage you to do, right. again, it comes back to the soil because everything kind of comes from the soil and ultimately returns to the soil. But if that soil has not been properly managed, then the minerals are either not there or they're locked up and inaccessible. And so even if you're eating a perfect proper human diet due to the mistakes made by farmers and ranchers, unknowingly, but still the results are the same, then you're not gonna be getting enough of these minerals. With the daily minerals, what benefits should you expect um, by taking them? So there's a, it depends on if you're depleted, it depends on if you're deficient, and it depends on which mineral you're having problems with. And so some people just notice a just an overall generalized, generalized improvement in mood. Some people notice a little more energy. Uh, some people notice they sleep better. Some people notice that they, they're more alert during the day, that they're more mentally clear. Literally, uh, a mineral deficiency can mimic any symptom. Mm. And so I'm not saying that as a blanket statement to say every human needs these minerals, although every human needs these minerals. <laughs> Uh, it's, it can be very subtle, a, a mineral de deficiency or a partial depletion. The, the signs and symptoms can be very, very subtle and seductive and misleading. And so out of an abundance of caution, I think we all should mind our minerals. And that's what I do every day. Now, I like to tell people that the reason Dr. Barry asked for the daily minerals was, was because he was tired of taking 15 different supplements yeah. every day. Yeah. So uh, what supplements are you replacing? I know you've got iodine yeah. and potassium, what else? So I no longer take a multivitamin because most of the vitamins you're gonna get from a proper human diet because the animals actually do form the vitamins in their body. Or the rumen does, or the rumen, which is close or the, enough. Or the bacteria, <laughs> which is also in the cow's body. That's right. And so you're gonna, if you're eating a proper human diet, you're gonna be getting virtually all of the vitamins that you need. 
Uh, you might have to go out of your way to get some extra vitamin D. You may have to take a supplement during the winter months, uh, but I think that's fine and ancestrally appropriate. But the minerals, you may not be getting enough of. And so I don't take a multivitamin, multimineral anymore. Um, I, don't, I don't really use that many electrolyte things anymore because they're actually in the daily minerals. I'm getting a lot of electrolytes from the meat and eggs that I eat. And then whatever left over that I still need, I get from the daily minerals. How do you prefer to consume the daily minerals? Like mm. what's, what's your favorite way to do it? Uh, through your ear, through your mouth? How do you do it? So <laughs> the way I like to do it... Don't they, do it through your ear. No, it, I don't think it would, the absorption is probably no, I don't not great. Think it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, so what I do is every cup or glass of liquid that I drink, uh, they have this new beautiful glass bottle with a little glass stopper. Mm -hmm. It's all glass, no plastic. And I put a couple of droppers full in each glass of beverage that I drink during the day. And then if I cook a steak or scramble some eggs, I'll always put a dropper full because it, on food, it tastes salty. Yeah. Now, some people just shoot the entire daily shot of daily minerals, but it's very salty and very minerally. Yeah, that copper has a strong flavor. Yes, yes, yes. And some people don't mind it at all. Some people abhor the taste. Yeah, but, I, can, I can only do that if I put some lemon in it. Yeah, yeah. The lemon but, takes all that away. So you put a few drops of lemon. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. I haven't tried that. But I, so when you put the, the minerals on food, yeah. like scrambled eggs, like steak. sardines, like steak, mm. it just tastes salty, at least to me. Yeah, I haven't had anybody else complain about the taste if they include it in their food. If you're making a meat chili or a meat stew, a bone broth, you can put the minerals in and it's just gonna give a, sal a full-bodied salty flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna have that potentially too minerally coppery taste. Now, that brings up an important point as far as will the daily minerals be damaged or harmed or degraded by cooking the, the So keep in mind, these are not vitamins. These are minerals, okay? They are elements on the periodic table of the elements. Now, as I mentioned earlier, cows cannot perform fission or fusion. <laughs> Neither can your cooktop or your oven. They don't get hot enough to split atoms or to put atoms together. And so you cannot destroy minerals by cooking. The heat is irrelevant, whereas that's not always true for vitamins. And so whatever you put the daily minerals in, you could you can put it in bone broth and cook it for three hours and let it sit on the stove all day and then cook it for another three hours. All the minerals are still in there. I recommend to people they maintain it below 7,000 degrees. Below 7,000 degrees that's and avoid safe. fusion or fission. And you're, <laughs> you're good. The minerals are still there. So the daily minerals, why are minerals and electrolytes combined together? Well, because they're all elements and they all combine together beautifully. And what if you, so currently you may be taking a multivitamin, multimineral mm -hmm. and an electrolyte supplement. What if you could just combine that with your daily dose of daily minerals? And that'd be, that'd be one less pill, one less supplement. They're all very bioavailable and bioabsorbable mm -hmm. the way Keto Chow makes them which is one of the reasons I, I picked them to, to partner with oh, is because me, I, I, know, I know these guys. And I, first of all, I know where they live. But secondly, I know that I can trust them to make a product that they would not put their name on if they were not very, very proud of it. So in the daily minerals, uh, why are the minerals and electrolytes necessary? So minerals are very important, as are electrolytes, in the, the proper function of your body. Sometimes they're used as cofactors in biochemical reactions. Sometimes they're actually part of the re reaction itself. But if you don't have enough minerals, you're either, your, your react reacting rate is gonna be slower or it may not even happen at all. Mm. And that's what leads to those kind of subtle symptoms of fatigue, mm. brain fog, just I don't have any energy, you know, get up and go. All those things are coming from the biochemical reactions in your body, either not running fast enough or just not able to run at all uh, without enough of the minerals and the electrolytes. Yeah, you listed off some things uh, earlier. It sounded like you were like cramping and things like that. Yeah, you or, could definitely muscle cramps, yeah. muscle twitches, virtually any mental symptom. Okay. can be a, a sign, a potential sign that you're deficient in a mineral. Uh, muscle function, gut function, the minerals are hugely important for proper gut function. Uh, 
to, to have the healthiest skin that you can have. Their minerals are required for every cell in your body that's ever been studied. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they're getting blood tests, they'll have their sodium and magnesium and potassium levels checked. And they'll usually notice that, oh, my, my numbers are fine in a blood test. How would they know whether they're actually low or not? Yeah. Is a blood test a good way to know if you're low on minerals? For many of the electrolytes and the minerals, uh, just getting your blood checked at the doctor's office is not a good way to know if you are partially or severely depleted. Now, if your levels get low enough, it will show up as a low level in your blood. But long before that happens, in which case you'd be really, really sick, long before that happens, a lot of these minerals, which are, many of them are stored in your bone, hmm. right? Uh, your bones store many of these minerals. That's how your body kind of warehouses the minerals for when they're needed. But the body keeps your serum levels in your blood in a very tight range. And so it will immediately pull that mineral that it needs from your bones anytime it needs it. And so you may have a normal blood level of one of these uh, elements, one of these minerals, but be severely depleted in your bone. And you may not know that if you just check blood work. And that may not matter until you, you come upon some stressful period in your life, either physical stress, psychological, emotional, spiritual. And then all of a sudden, when you've really depleted your bones of that mineral, there's no more storehouses. And that's when the, the deficiency really starts to rear its uncomfortable head. So how would you know if you're low? Well, that's the problem. And so uh, outside of a, of, a, of a bone biopsy to see what the levels of minerals, minerals are there, some you can check uh, using specific uh, blood tests that are done in a certain way. But in many cases, it's virtually impossible to know if you're truly depleted or not. Would it be a bad idea to go ahead and try some mineral supplements and see yeah. if, and that's if it a, makes you feel good? Exactly. <laughs> and that, that's why so many people, they're like, I'm not sure what's wrong, but I just don't feel great. Mm. I don't feel right. I don't have what I think I need. I think it's, it's a, a brilliant idea to just try one bottle of the daily minerals, use it daily, just like the directions say, and that, that's a good trial. And then after a few days, which it won't take long, if you're deficient in anything, you're going to start to feel better. Mm. And you're like, oh, yeah, and it may, it may not be a specific thing that gets better. Very often it's, it's kind of ephemeral, like, I don't know, I just overall I feel better. <laughs> and most people are very happy when that happens because feeling better in any way is better than feeling bad in any way. So why do the daily minerals taste so bad? Would it, wouldn't it have been better to add some flavoring and maybe some sweetener and stuff like that? Yeah. One of the things Chris and I talked about when we were developing this formula is I don't, we, don't, we neither wanted any artificial flavor, any artificial anything, no preservatives. We didn't want any sweetener in it whatsoever. We don't want to be provoking an insulin response inappropriately. And so it, it's just the minerals. And what that's going to leave you with is something that tastes quite salty mm -hmm. to some people. To other people, it's a minerally or a, a copper, copper penny yeah. taste. Uh, some people just think it tastes salty. But you won't know what you think until you try it. Uh, but we didn't want any artificial anything in it. We didn't want to add a single thing to this formula that we didn't absolutely need to have. So can you put it in your coffee? Yeah, I do every morning. Can you put it You can in... even put it in decaf. What? Yeah. What about can you like put it in any drink you want? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Beckett, uh, my three-year-old, he, he loves goat milk. Okay. Yeah, he loves goat's milk. And so Does he actually tackle the goats and milk? He himself? would if we had a goat. <laughs> he would, definitely. Uh, but what I do is every time I fill up a, a, one of his containers with goat's milk, I'll put seven or eight drops of the mineral drops in there. Because, you know, he's three years old. He doesn't need a full day supply. Okay. So you feel comfortable giving the daily minerals to your I own give child? Him, I give them to him every day. Okay. He doesn't know it. And if he <laughs> catches me, then he pretends like he can taste it. But if I do it and he doesn't see me do it, it's totally fine. Okay. Many adults are this way as well. <laughs> now, I have noticed some people that when they first start the Daily Minerals, they're like, wow, that flavor is really strong. Yep. And it, I don't have any actual data to support this, but it seems that as people's bodies recognize a source of nutrition. Exactly. Like uh, bone marrow. 
Yeah. A lot of people, when they first start off, they're like, what are you talking, are you crazy? Yep. And as time goes on, their body recognizes that mm -hmm. and begins to crave it. Yeah, our entire existence on this planet as a species has been a quest for nutrition. Hmm. That is even above reproduction and procreation. That is the number one drive. Well, you have to be alive to get to those. Got to get fed to stay alive, <laughs> and you can't do any of the other fun stuff if you ain't alive. Yep. And so I think you're exactly right, and I've heard this feedback from hundreds of people too in our group that when I first started the Daily Minerals, it was so strong. But I think that we have this inherent ability to our body recognizes, no, wait, that's nutrient dense. I really mm -hmm. need what's in that. And then after a few months, they're like, I actually like the taste now, or the taste doesn't bother me at all anymore. Yeah. Um, I know some people like to add it to like their seltzer water. They, mm -hmm. they have one of those uh, soda water, soda stream things, yep. and they make their own Topo yep. Chico. I've been, I've been <laughs> told to add the minerals after you infuse oh, it yes. with carbon dioxide, yes. not oh, before. Please don't put it before. It's like Diet Coke and Mentos yeah, going on. Yeah, it explodes. <laughs> Not because it's dangerous, but because it just causes all the carbonation to come out immediately. Hey, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. <laughs> this is so true and so nerdy. <laughs> Sorry. Continuing on with that, how, how would you make the daily minerals easier to consume? So I split my daily dose up over the course of the day. That's okay. the way I do it. And so I'll put 15 drops in this cup of coffee, 15 drops in this glass of sparkling water. Okay. Uh, when I cook, break my fast and eat my steak and eggs, I'll put 10 or 15 drops on that. And over the course of the day, I get my full supply of daily minerals and I never taste it when I do it that way. Speaking of steak and eggs, actually eggs, we actually give it to our chickens. I, I think that's a great idea. And I'll, I, I, this is not um, approved by the American Veterinary Association, <laughs> but actually my guardian dog, my Great Pyrenees, okay. uh, about twice a week, he gets a, a oh. dropper full of the minerals. And yeah. uh, every gallon of water that I use to hydrate my quail, yeah. I put 15 drops in the gallon. So oh, that works. So it dilutes. Okay. And then also the chickens, I'll put a dropper full in their yeah. water once or twice a week as well. Whenever yeah. we do it, we always make sure that we have fresh water next to the salty stuff yeah. so that they can self-select, so they can yeah, identify it. Mine just okay. drink what they get. Well, they, they, they in inevitably go nuts over the stuff with the electrolytes. They, because their body oh, yeah. realizes that's nutrition, mm -hmm. I need that. Yeah. Chickens ain't dumb. Well, mm -hmm. okay, chickens are kind of dumb. Chickens are hilarious. They are, <laughs> they are. Nature's comedians. Except Tiny velociraptors. Chris. So why this particular ratio of the different electrolytes? Like there's like a thousand milligrams of potassium and I think it's 200 or 400 milligrams of magnesium. Yep. I don't remember um, off the top of my head, but why those specific amounts? So several reasons for those. We didn't want to go too heavy on the magnesium mm -hmm. uh, because some people have some Magnesium problems. tastes like fire. <laughs> yeah, magnesium doesn't taste great, but also some people can have some gastrointestinal issues with there's too that. much uh, magnesium, although magnesium is vital, you've got to get enough magnesium for optimal function. But we wanted, to, and, and then also, you're probably going to get some magnesium from the food you're eating if you're eating a proper human diet. You're probably going to get a, a good supply of that each day, and that. But you still got that insurance backup in the in the mineral drops just in case you need a little extra ma magnesium. It's in there. If you don't need it, guess what? No problem. No fuss. No foul. You urinated away. So why isn't there more sodium in the daily minerals? Because sodium is extremely important. Yeah. So most people on a proper human diet, keto, ketovore, carnivore, they're going to salt their food to taste, mm -hmm. right? And so the vast majority of us are doing that. We're getting almost all the salt that we need, and we've got that little backup in the, the mineral drops just in case you need some more. Yeah, I always say salt is cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. Potassium it's, it, is... Salt is good for you, magnesium and it's not going to hurt you, and if you need a little extra, it's there for you. Why some of these more obscure elements like iodine and molybdenum? How do you say that? Molybdenum. Molybdenum. Not close. <laughs> so there are some minerals that we included purposefully in this, but even though there's not a, an official FDA... Uh, oh, requirement yeah. for them, right? And because reading the nutrition research and looking at papers in some cases back from the 1950s and 60s, oh. 
the, these are very important cofactors to biochemical reactions in your body, if not uh, mandatory for certain reactions to even happen. And uh, there's a, some of these are in tiny, tiny amounts in the mineral drops, but you need that tiny amount each day. And as I said earlier, if it's not in the soil that your food either grew in or grazed on, then it's not in your food. It's just parts per million is what you need. Huh? You're exactly right, yeah. And some of them you don't want too much, and that's yeah. why there's only a tiny amount in there. Some people have reported that they feel nauseated or have an upset stomach after taking the daily minerals. What, what should they do about that? So I would, I, would, I would stop taking the full daily dose and I would start to just maybe take a, a quarter dose for a few days, then a half dose and work your way up. This same thing happens for many people when they uh, adopt a nutrient dense, proper oh, okay. human diet. The, they're not used to getting that much nutrition at mm, one time. Okay. And their body, they interpret that for a few days as, I feel kind of nauseated. Or for people who have been just chronically portion controlling, calorie okay. restricting yeah. for decades, when they allow themselves to eat to satiety, eat till they're comfortably stuffed, that can be interpreted as nausea for a few days until your, your gut says, oh no, wait, we're, we're actually eating properly now and the food is very nutrient dense, those are all good things, I'm gonna stop sending that signal. And I think the same thing happens with the mineral drops. As soon as your body realizes, just like the chickens do, oh no, well, this is good, good stuff, I yeah, need yeah. this. Then all of a sudden, the, that mild nausea goes away and you start, if anything, to have a craving. I'm craving electrolytes, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well thank you very much, Dr. Barry. It's a pleasure, brother. It was such a pleasure. I love it, thank you. Okay, bye everybody.